level biology it can be the bane of many students lives but in this video we're going to be talking through our top tips and we've spoken to our expert medical student tutors at the UK's top universities including Cambridge and Oxford. If you guys are new here don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and also if you're interested in one-to-one -one tutoring be sure to check out our link in our description. We offer the most comprehensive and personalised one-to-one -one academic tutoring to help you get your A star. Link is in the description below. Alright guys, enjoy! The very first tip that I think all A-level biology students should know is use your specification. Your specification is going to be your best friend. So if you don't know what the specification is, it's a really long document that can be found often on the examiner's website. So for example, I did AQA A-level biology and I just go onto the AQA A-level website and find the biology course and there is the specification. And what it does is it gives you every single thing that can be examined on one document. And I think for me, I really based my learning around the specification because it gave me confidence. I knew walking into that exam that I had everything prepped and I knew everything that could come up onto that exam. So for example, how I'd use it is, it would say something like, what is structures of blood vessels? And you can then go back and you can check the textbooks, you can check your schoolwork and you can base that on how you st structure your learning. So, for example, if I'd have seen that, I'd have then been like, oh, OK, so now we're we need to know about the arteries. We need to know about the veins. We need to know about their structure, their function, their similarities, their differences. And I think it just gives you a really good picture of what the um, exam papers can be composed of. Um, so that is my number one tip, is to just use your specification to drive your learning um, to be as efficient as possible because a lot of the time we can, when we go through the textbooks and things, there's so much information, it can be really hard to know where to start and where to focus on. And I think going to the specification is a really good way to start. Understand, don't just memorize. So firstly, when you're being taught in class, always stop and ask questions. This ensures you've obtained all the information for later revision. So for example, when you're learning about sickle cell and human biology, and you understand it's due to genetic mutation, really stop and think about what's happening that results in this change in phenotype that in turn results in these sickling crises. Secondly, when there are gaps in your knowledge, Try and consult to your teachers and peers and use online resources such as YouTube videos or pre-written notes on the Physics and Maths Tutor website. You can then use this information and the specification to make comprehensive notes. This will ensure that you cover all the points before your exam. In addition, make sure your notes are nice and clear because if you don't understand them whilst you're writing them, you probably won't understand them a couple of months down the line. And finally, try and use a variety of methods when making notes, whether it's handwritten ones or typed ones or using mind maps. And this will allow you to help form links between different parts of the specification. Anyways, the take home message is before you write your notes, make sure you have all the information you need to make clear, concise notes. And the key here is to focus on your weaknesses. It can be really easy to fall into the trap of just practicing questions of topics that you're very good at and that's because it gives us a morale boost and makes us feel better especially when there are topics that you find quite difficult uh, and are consistently getting wrong in exams um, but that cycle only ever means that the topics that you find difficult remain something that you're never paying attention to and uh, you won't be getting those marks in the final exams that you do as well so something that I've always been taught uh, and I'm sure many of you have heard the phrase, is to eat the frog, which means to target the thing that you find the most difficult, um, the thing that you find most horrible, whatever topic or question that may be, and really sort of um, facing it head on. Now, it's important to consider why you find a certain topic difficult. Is it because you don't have enough information about the topic? Is it that you're struggling to memorize the topic? Is it that you don't understand the sort of applied knowledge around the topic? Identifying what it is that you find uh, difficult about the topic is the first step to thinking about how you can approach it. 
Additionally, in terms of focusing on your weaknesses, you've got to actually allocate and dedicate time to the parts that you find particularly hard. Um, that might look like in your timetable saying Saturdays are dedicated to thinking about um, genetics and so all the topics in genetics will be kind of covered in your Saturday and you can think about what one or two things you want to focus on in the day but allocating time uh, and a, a slot for when you want to do that can be a really good first step for you to actually sort of uh, target the revision head-on for a topic that you you may not particularly like. Um, so identifying what you find difficult about the topic is helpful. Allocating time to actually um, face the topic uh, is another useful technique so that you aren't able to run away from it and you aren't constantly av avoiding it. Now, having a checklist is also another useful thing that you can do. If you've checked a certain topic and you've said, yes, I've done this, um, think about when you may want to re-look um, re at it again. So you may want to consider whether you look at it again in about um, a week's time, two weeks time, but allocate time for that too. Because if you've told yourself that you're going to do that, you can avoid going through something again and again and again within a certain day or within a certain week. And that will allow you to pay your um, pay some attention to some of the other topics that need your um, uh, need your focus. And so three things three tips there. So you can figure out what it is you find difficult about the topic so you can target your approach appropriately. Um, allocate time to the topics that you don't like. If you put that into a timetable or decided that you're dedicating a day, it gives you that opportunity to prepare for the fact that you're going to be doing that that day. You may be able to get the resources you need, whether that's videos, um, whether it's your flashcards, your notebooks and everything so you're mentally ready to target the topic and then also ensuring that if there are topics that you are good at and you are covered, you have covered, think about when you look at it next so that you've, in your mind, dedicated time for that too um, but you're not um, overtaking uh, all of your needed revision with topics that you're already very comfortable with. It's no secret that doing past exam papers is one of the best ways to revise. It tests your knowledge and it sees it lets you see where the gaps are so that you can go back and you can revise those topics. So the exam past papers are once again found on um, the exam board's website. And I think kind of the techniques that I would recommend is First of all, making sure that you're really strict with yourself. It's so easy to be doing the past papers with the mark, screen, mark scheme up on the computer, but that's not really gonna test how well you think you're doing and what you know and what you need to work on. So I think it's about being really strict, doing it under the time pressure. Um, so you have a go without the mark scheme. And then use a different colored pen for when you're marking it to show where the gaps are and then so it kind of sticks in your head more so that if you then want to go and look back over the paper you can see oh I missed that last time but now I know it um and I think exam papers or past papers are a really good way of getting familiar with the types of words that quite often you know a level biology is famously picky of like you need to say these exact words to get the marks and quite often these repeat and so particularly going through the last five to ten years of exam papers is really really helpful i'd be cautious to check when your if your specification may have changed and things like that to make sure that you're doing the relevant papers but i think it's really good and i think some of the techniques that is important to remember is highlighting the like command words in the exam questions such as describe so that means we say what we see or explain and this is where we can link it back to the scientific principle i think exam papers are a really good way of testing the knowledge and really for encouragement you've done all of the work and you've revised a topic and you know that you can answer those exam questions on those topics so it can give you even extra confidence walking into the final exam knowing yeah I know I can answer those questions on that. So I really think hey, doing past exam papers is a really, really, really good way to revise. As much as you've been told that your 
revision should be based around understanding and not memorization. Um, it's absolutely true, but there is an element of revision that requires memorization. And so it's important to identify what that is and what isn't. And quite often it's the facts that will fall under the category of memorization. And uh, when you're revising and you're not quite sure what the name of um, a certain process is or what converts one thing to another, those are the type of facts that should be going on a flashcard so that you can go back and test yourself on it. Um, it's quite difficult to, to put a big chunk of information on a flashcard, it's not a very effective tool for revision, um, but where you can ask yourself one question with one specific answer, um, it's quite useful to put that on a flashcard so that you're testing yourself. Um, for example, you may be doing your revision on the blood clotting cascade and you may need to know what do I need to convert prothrombin to thrombin. And in this case, you can put that question onto a flashcard and pop your answer on the back, and that's something that you can do to test yourself. And it's important that when you are using uh, flashcards, um, and you may be using apps like Quizlet and Anki, the way that you use your flashcards are quite important. And if you want to see a video on how to use um, Anki or other flashcard apps, do let us know in the comments so we can kind of go through it with you comprehensively. Um, but the key here is to know your basics with your A-level biology revision. So you will be doing your notes, you'll be doing your mind maps, you'll be doing your questions. And if you find that there are things that you're consistently not remembering as opposed to not understanding, the bits that you don't remember should be just taken and popped into a flashcard so that you can look back at it in your evenings. You can do your 20 minutes of flashcards or on the way to school you can do your flashcards and make sure that you're topping up your knowledge with regards to the basics so that um, you're able to answer bigger questions. Quite often these facts may exist as multiple choice questions or they kind of make up some of the marks are, that are part of bigger questions and so it's really helpful to know uh, definitions, it's really helpful to know things that convert to one thing to another, it's really helpful to know the facts of um, things like what makes up a cell or what are the um, functions of things within cells. These are things that you can ask yourself one question with one answer and that will help you consolidate your basics. Once you know that it becomes a lot easier when you're doing exam questions to start your exam question with something that you know that is relevant and then you can work your way down to the more applied part of your answer. So when you are revising and you're finding that there are facts within your revision, uh, facts such as knowing that DNA replication is a semi-conservative process, that's a fact and then that's something that you can pop into a revision card. Sort of understanding um, processes and why or explain questions are more of your um, applied sort of um, avenues and those are not the sort of questions you'd want to put on a flashcard. Now, when you have um, simple sort of uh, facts that you can put on a flashcard, it's really helpful to put the mark scheme definition or the mark scheme answer as your answer so that you're learning exactly what you need to know for your specification. We know this can be a really difficult and stressful time for all you guys, but it's also important to prioritise your well-being because only when you're going to be feeling at your best that you'll be able to perform at your best. If you're interested, be sure to have a look at our exam stress video where we go through our top tips to maximise your well-being during exam times. Alright guys, we hope you've enjoyed. See you in the next one.